Hello everyone, it's Nazari Kola. So today I want to share with you my journey from working as a registered nurse in the NHS to becoming a university lecturer in the UK. It's been an incredible journey, to be honest. And uh, in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some additional insights into my decision. So I'll start by talking you through why I made the decision in the first instance, what informed my decision, then probably in a separate video, I'll tell you what I did, the step by step, and that's probably that's definitely going to help if there's anyone else thinking about following that same path and you don't know what to do. So I'll just tell you briefly how you can go about achieving that uh, that dream of yours. Okay, and at some point I might just walk you through my experience so far, especially in in comparison with the clinical with the clinical experience. So sit back and let's dive right in. If you are if you are yet to subscribe, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell as well so you can be notified of our subsequent video. First thing first, let's get the nice points out of the way. I always love teaching. I have passion for teaching. And throughout my career I've always enjoyed sharing my knowledge with uh Maybe my colleagues, my junior colleagues, students, I've always had a nice relationship with uh, with students. So I enjoy sharing my knowledge as an individual. That has always been at the back of my head. Uh, I'll probably enjoy teaching as a as a career. Okay, but in most cases, we don't know how to go about it. We don't know what what we have to do and. We just keep it somewhere as a long term uh, vision or as a long long term dream. So when I get to know about the opportunity to transition into teaching in the in the United Kingdom, then it wasn't a, a difficult decision for me to for me to make. My only fear was I hope teaching in the UK is not significantly different from what I'm used to. Uh, that was just a bit of a uh, fear if i if i call it fear that was coming up more well, other than that it was an easy decision for me to to make because i know how i feel i'll do well in teaching another key factor in my decision is the workload in the nhs and i'll be honest with you well some people get along with it well they, but i don't think it's meant for me <laughs> I don't think, I don't think, I don't think it's meant for me. I've always, uh, there's this joke I always make about it, that if I stay too long in the NHS, I might end up being disabled at the end of the day, because it's a lot of, it's a lot of stress. Okay. And incidentally for me, when I joined the NHS, my onboarding wasn't quite smooth, okay, because it was during the pandemic, so my onboarding wasn't, very smooth and it was quite challenging quite challenging for me i felt i never recovered from those initial initial experience and it keeps coming back and ringing ringing in my ringing in my head okay. if i'll be honest with you within my first was it first year or one and a half years in the in the nhs i've had a couple of work related injuries i've made a video definitely about when i when i collapsed when i passed out at work you can watch that you can watch that yeah okay that was just that was just a tip of ice bag <laughs> okay i've had knee injury at some point i've had back injury at some point and uh i've finished a, a shift and it was like you played football if, if you play football you know this muzzle pool that you have as a footballer you have muzzle pool because you're just running around for 12 hours and uh, at the end of the shift you could barely you could barely walk and i felt I don't think I can do this for the next 10, 20, 20, 25 years of my life. Mba. <laughs> okay. So from there, we've been it's been a factor of occupied till I come. Just let's keep doing it until we have another opportunity or we have something else to do. So again, when the opportunity to transition into teaching showed up, then I had to just take it and try something, try something different. And also the 
the pressure in the in the clinical side, I don't enjoy it. Okay. There are various various form of the pressure, but the fact that you leave work, but the work does not leave you, if you know what I mean. The fact that you leave work and uh, you get home, you still try, you try, you see, trying to recall everything. Oh, I, I hope I've done everything right. Have I done this? Did I document this? Did I write this here? Did I do this? Have I said anything you're not supposed to say? I'm, I'm not supposed to say. Have I? Have I? Have I? I hope I've not. Have I? Have I? I hope I've not. And all those things stays in your head for as long as, as long as they want, for weeks, sometimes months. You had, you always have. It's like a normal recurrence. You have a probably you're just minding your own business and your, your line manager just send you an email and say they need a statement from you, a patient that that was under your care maybe two months ago, you raised the complaint, that something, something. You don't even have to be involved, but the fact that you're on shift, <laughs> it might not even be like, it might have nothing to do with you, but the fact that you're on shift on that day, so it's not, you're not just worried about yourself alone, you, you're still worried about the people you are working with, because even if anything goes wrong in another person's bay or another person's, uh, with another person's patients, the fact that you're on shift as well, they still come for you and say, okay, come and write your statements, tell us what you what you observe, tell us what you see. And sometimes you can't you can't just be normal. <laughs> you can just you can just you can just uh, maintain your sanity with 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 all those things. I I'm speaking for myself. Other people might have different views or probably they have a better way of handling those things, but I don't I don't want to I don't think I'm. I don't think I want to work where I'll be. I'll be losing sleep over what I've done or what I've not, what I've not done, and uh, the system looks like you're you're working every day, going to work with with a level of panic, okay. And that's how the system appears to me. Everybody is afraid of making mistake. Everybody is afraid of things getting wrong. Everybody is afraid of getting in trouble. They might not tell you directly that they are afraid of getting in trouble, but they, you know, this uh, euphemism. So they paint it in a in a different way, makes it look like okay, we are just being meticulous here, we are just being diligent here. But if they tell you, if they are, if they are being honest with you, they are just everybody just afraid of getting in trouble. You might have people telling you uh, just in case, just, uh, let's let's just be sure. Yeah, just in case, just in case, let's just be sure, let's just be sure, just in case, and all those things. It is just all this fear of <laughs> getting in, getting in, uh, getting in trouble. Okay, so you, you go to work and you are dreading <laughs> what's what's going to what's going to happen at work. So even when you think you're at your best, you can never guarantee that something is not going to go wrong at one point. So I don't really enjoy that, and uh, for my mental health, I. I started drawing my plans and say, okay, let me start. Let me see what uh, what else I can do, other than other than this. I love nursing. I love caring. But the the pressure that comes with it, especially in the UK here, is a major threat to the to the passion. So these uh, challenges, combined with a desire for a new career path were instrumental in my in my decision to transition to a role as a university lecturer. And, and in, I feel in the classroom, I can utilize my nursing experience to educate and inspire the next generation of, uh, of, of nurses. And uh, with my experience so far in the, in the teaching, it, it has provided me with a platform to share my knowledge and skills in a less stressful environment not necessarily less stress but different level of stress <laughs> okay so it's a different level of stress and uh i feel more fulfilled for a very long time i feel um i feel happy to be a nurse once again so i feel i'm contributing to the future of nursing in a different but equally impactful impactful way so the transition from bedside to classroom has allowed me to find a better work-life balance while still making a positive impact on the nursing profession. And this has reignited, reignited my passion for nursing and 
education in, in general. So thank you for joining me on this journey and for allowing me to share my reasons for making this career change. I'm excited for what the future holds and look forward to continuing to inspire and empower future nurses. So until next time, I'll see you again. Cheers.